So get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness, and in a humble, gentle, and modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which is implanted and rooted in your hearts and contains the power to save your souls. I'm talking about the integrity of God's seed. You know, there's many people that's received seed from God in their life over the years. Now, firstly, we've got to understand what the seed is that God is speaking of. This verse tells us what the seed is. It says it's the Word of God. That's not just what's printed in this book. The Word of God is whatever God sows or speaks into your life as an individual. Whatever revelation, whatever word you receive from God in your life is the word of the Lord that comes to you. It's seed that God deposits in your life. Can you see that this morning? The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But we assume that he's talking about the Bible. So I've got to read as much of the Bible as I can because this is the Word of God. And I've got to read it, memorize it, because my faith will grow strong the more I've got some of this printed material in my heart. That's not what he's saying at all. He's saying that if God is speaking to you, and if you hear his Word in your life, it will evoke faith in your heart and you will respond to that word because of the word that came to you from God. He's explaining salvation. He's saying one day the Holy Spirit spoke into your heart and showed you and the word became alive in you and faith came alive in you because God spoke to you and you responded to the word. Can you see this? You cannot respond in faith without a word from God. You need God to speak to you. All right, so, okay, I don't want to get into that. That's a whole uh, apple pie for another Sunday. But the, the fact of the matter is, the seed is the word that we receive from God in our lives. Now, I want to say this morning, there are people throughout their life that's received a whole lot of seed from God. A whole lot of seed has been invested in them. And you know what? It never happened the way God said it would for many people. Do you agree with me? There are many people that received word from the Lord. When they got the word, they were all excited. God spoke to me. Or somebody gave me a prophetic word. And this, and this, and this is what's going to happen in my life. And I'm going to go there. Who of you have had that? Okay? And for many people, those things never happened. And so many people, because it's not happened, start questioning the integrity of God's seed. Because the Lord said this will happen, the Lord said that will happen, the Lord said this will, and this is where I'm going to go. But none of it came true. So why did it never happen? I mean, why did God not cause these things to happen in my life? I don't understand why these things never came true. Are you with me? And people start questioning the integrity of the seed of God. But this morning we're going to find out whether the problem is with the integrity of the seed of God, or whether the problem is with the integrity of your heart. Alright? We're going to find out this morning where the problem lies. Why and how does these things come about in our life? Where is the integrity issue really to be found? So, when we read James, we read about three very important things in this one verse. Number one, it speaks of God as a sower. All right, that's the first thing we see, that God sows. The second thing we see, we see that somebody needs to receive the field. In other words, uh, receive the seed. In other words, there needs to be a field to receive the seed. Is that right? That's the second thing we see and that we learn in that verse. The third thing we see in that verse is that there's going to be a product or fruit upon that seed which is received if it is received in our lives. Can we see that? So there's three things in that verse. A sower, a field, and the fruit that will come because of the seed sown. Now, 
Do you remember when we started this fellowship right at the beginning? The very first word that God ministered here was the vision of the planting of a new tree. Can you remember that? For those that started here, can you remember that? For those that didn't start here, you'll find it on your DVD that you got. Just go and look for it. The vision, or it will say the planting of a new tree. Just go and listen to that and you'll understand. But when we started here at the beginning, God said that He wants to plant a brand new tree. And He said to us that this tree that He wants to plant is not only a tree of people coming together like this, corporately, something new that He wants to establish, but it's also a new tree that He wants to plant in your life and in my life. In other words, the tree will not just be planted in a corporate thing. Let's start something new. Let's give it a new name. Let's do things a little bit differently. Let's, let's, let's get away from what others are doing wrong and then do this more correctly. And so we plant this new tree. No, 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 no. He said the new tree will be planted in you and in me. Can you remember this? Then the Lord went on to ask us, what do you need to plant a new tree? What are the three essential things that you need to plant a tree? And we said, number one, you need seed. Without seed, you cannot plant a tree. Why? Inside of the seed is the inside of the seed is the life to produce the tree. We said and concluded that that was God's responsibility because only God can allow something to live and to grow. No matter what you do, the life can only come from God. It cannot come from you. It cannot be produced by you or me. It can only come. From God. If the Lord does not build the house, in vain do they build the try. God needs to do the new work. So the seed is not our responsibility. James chapter 1 verse 19. What is it? 21. What did I just read? Verse 21 tells you that the seed is from God. Is that right? Alright. The second thing that we determine to plant a new tree is that we need an orchard or a field to plant it in, right? Because if you got the seed and you've got nowhere to put it, how is it going to grow to produce the tree? And then we determine that the orchard or the field is not God's responsibility. It's ours. We have to be willing to make ourselves available. To make our lives available and to allow God to come and invest the seed inside of us so that a new tree can be planted and can start growing in our lives. Is that right? So the field is not God's responsibility. It's ours. The third thing we said that's essential to having this new tree grow is that you and I or somebody will need to care for the tree. Somebody will need to nourish it, take care of it, protect it, water it, feed it. And then we said, that is not God's responsibility either. That's going to be your responsibility and my responsibility. Because God planted a seed that's already got everything inside of it to produce what's built into that seed. We now provide the soil. Here's my life. Plant this in me. Change me. Do something in me. And from there, I need to protect and look after what God's put into my heart. The Bible says many people receive the seed quickly. In other words, they say, here's my life. Yes, plant the tree in me. And then suddenly things start happening in their life that divert their attention. Some need, some care, some situation come in their life. And they run back to the old way of doing things. And immediately the tree that God's planted in them withers away. So the third thing is that the seed needs to be nourished. And that's us. That's our responsibility. Can you see that this morning? You know, a few weeks ago in Natal, the Lord started talking to me and He dropped some new words into my spirit. 
And some of the new words God dropped in my spirit, the two words were organic and organism. Just those two words, organic and organism. And as I started contemplating these words that the Lord dropped into my spirit, the Holy Spirit started talking to me and He simply explained to me, He said, organic means that something is left to grow without anybody interfering with it. Organic means that something is left to develop in the way that it was designed to develop without any human interference, without anybody helping it to become what it is, without anybody contributing to, towards it to become what it was designed to be. It's just left alone to grow the way it was designed to grow. And then the Lord spoke about organism, and He said, it's the same thing. An organism, you don't have to tell it what to do. An organism will just do whatever it's been programmed to do. It's going to grow by itself. And that's the seed part of things. When we look this morning at God the sower, you've got to understand that you don't need to tell an apple tree to produce apples. You don't need, if you've got an apple tree seed and you put that into the ground, you don't have to tell that seed to become an apple tree. You don't have to help that seed to become an apple tree. It will grow there by itself and in season you don't have to do something special to get the apple tree to produce apples. It's just going to do that if you leave it alone to organically grow the way it was designed to grow. The seed is perfect, okay? It's already got everything in it to change you. It's got everything in, in it to produce in you. And now that seed is sown. Alright, just like this morning, this seed, this word you're listening to, is sown into your life. But you know, not all seed that's sown is received. Listen carefully. Not all seed, as perfect as it is, as powerful as it is, as much as it contains everything that God designed for it to impact and change your life, not all seeds sown is received. And I watched a very interesting documentary just a few days ago that confirmed all of this stuff to me. Because it explained from the creation of the universe how wonderful God created everything to reproduce and how He designed life. His life into everything. And he talked about a seed, and he said the following. He said that a seed, when it's sown, the moment the seed falls into the ground, it's got the built-in ability to start sensing its environment. In other words, if I was a seed, I would be able, as that seed, to send out little signals or reflectors to determine where I am, what kind of soil I just landed in? What is the humidity factor of the ground I've been sown into? Is this fertile ground or dry ground? I'll be able as a seed to feel all of this from the inside of me because it's been built into me and it would leave me with a choice to either say I can germinate here or I cannot germinate yet, because if I germinate now, I will kill whatever has been put inside of me. There's no room for this plant or this tree to develop in this soil, so I cannot open myself up. I need to stay dormant. And this documentary stated that seeds may lay in soil for years as dormant seeds. They never come up. Because they sense the environment and they find out that nothing here is ready to receive me. In other words, if I germinate now, whatever I'm carrying is going to be aborted. And so I'm just lying there with all of this potential in me, with everything that's been placed in me. I'm lying there dormantly waiting to be received. Waiting for the right conditions. Waiting for the soil to be ready to receive me. And I want to tell you this morning, that's exactly what happens when God sows His seed into your life. It's not about the integrity of the seed. 
The seed is perfect. It contains absolutely everything God said. It contains the power of life to produce those things in your life. It's got everything inside of it to do exactly what you hear this morning. This seed you're receiving has got everything compacted in it to make it a reality in your own life. But if you are not ready to receive the seed, it's going to fall into your life and it's going to lie dormant. It's going to wait for you for the time and the opportunity where it can sense that this person will become the branches that's carrying the fruit of what was sown inside of them. So how... Do I receive God's seed? This is the core of my message. Let me ask you a question this morning. If there is one phrase in this ministry that you've heard over and over and over and over again, one word that you can recognize that's basically been a part of every sermon, from the beginning, for the last eight months, this has been a line consistently that you could draw through in every meeting. You heard this word. If I had to ask you, Donnie, what that word was, because I can see he already has it. If I can ask you what that word is, can you tell me? Surrender. Surrender is the one message, the one word, the one thing that you can draw a line from the beginning when we started this fellowship all the way through and in most every meeting that you were a part of, you would have heard the word surrender. Why? Because it's the only way that you will ever be able to receive anything from God. There's nothing, listen to me, there's nothing from your salvation to the day that you go to meet Jesus that you will receive from heaven that does not come by your surrender. The day you got saved, you had to surrender your heart, your will and your ways unto God to receive His ways, His life, his word, His will in you. Is that right? And ever since then, whatever God deposited in your life could only be received in your surrender. Doesn't mean that it wasn't sown in your life. Doesn't mean that it's not still lying dormantly in your life. There are churches today packed with people so full of God's seed that never germinated. It's just lying there, waiting to be received. Waiting to germinate. Waiting to become in them everything God promised, everything God said, to produce the harvest in them. It's waiting to be received. But it can only be received in surrender. You see, the seed, when it falls in you, it needs you to be fertile ground. It needs you to say, Put this inside of me. Yes, Lord, I receive it. Let it germinate in me and let it start growing because the growing process is a change process. That's why not many people surrender because surrendering means changing. It means God's going to order your feet in a different direction. It means God's going to renew your mind. That means the ideas that you had of how things work, He's going to change them to His ideas, to how His ways work. And so He's going to renew your mind to under... No, but I thought this is the way. And, and I believe... No, no, no. You believed wrong. That's wrong. I'm going to change your mind and your ideas to come into line with my ideas. This is how it works. Come change with me. Surrender means change. All right? Now, the reason why that's the key word in this fellowship is it's the reason why God asked me to leave my ministry behind. 
and to begin this movement of fellowships all over wherever God will send and wherever God will lead is because God is looking for seed carriers in whom He can produce the harvests of the seed He's sowing. And so the Lord said, I want you to go and teach people how to walk in surrender. I want you to take them where they are with all those ideas and all the opinions that's been programmed into them. All the religious little things that they've been taught. Shake it all out. Bring them to a place of submission where they'll know me in the power of my living life and surrender themselves to the life of my spirit that I may teach them. That I may lead them. That I may produce in them. That they may, be, may become the product of my own life. You see, that's the core value. If you take that out of this ministry, we know different than anybody else, even if we do things differently. The core of it is that God wants to impart into you the knowledge, the ability to walk in total surrender. What does surrender mean? Surrender is not something you do when you lift your hands in church and sing, I surrender all. Surrender doesn't mean you've given your heart to Jesus. Surrender means you no longer have a will in your life. You've accepted God's will as the highest authority to be guided in. You seek and you desire to do Thy will, O God. I've given myself completely to You. God, I'm not taking any decisions. I'm just going to exercise Your decisions. I'm not going to choose for my life. I'm going this way or I'm going that way. I'm going to allow the seed to germinate in me so that I'll be led of the Spirit and know that where I'm going, I'm following my leader. I'm walking in divine purpose. I'm walking in divinely ordained destiny. Where I'm going, God has already been. Where I'm going, God, before the foundations of the world was laid, He was already present there. He's prepared a place for me. He's prepared a table for me. He's prepared that portion in my life. And He's calling me towards it. He's drawing me towards it. And I'm surrendering myself. And I'm following in His footsteps. Walking in a predetermined course exercising His will over my will, submitting myself. Oh, it's lovely to listen to. It's lovely to hear. It's lovely to say, Hallelujah! But it's hard to follow. Because you've got a natural man and a natural flesh that constantly want to kick against the pricks, that's constantly questioning God, that's constantly asking what about this, and what if that happens, and why this, and why do I have to go this way when everybody else is going that way, and why when everybody's got it so easy, why do I have to travel this narrow, hard road, and why if it looks like they're all blessed, why are you calling me in a place that doesn't look blessed? Why are you calling me, God? You say, I will reign as the king on the throne. And here I am in a cave, a dunam, hidden with thieves and mongers and people I don't want to associate with. Why? Why, oh God, did you show me this magnificent dream? And here I am in a pit, bound up with ropes, sold into slavery. Why, oh God, am I in a prison cell when you promised me this beautiful vision and dream? Why? When you start following the design and the purpose of God, your flesh will have many whys. And there will be no answers for those wise except God called you, follow me. Put everything down. Put everything down. Young man, you want the kingdom of God. Young man, you really want an inheritance. 
Young man, do you really want to know me? Young man, do you really want to follow me? Really? Are you sure? Go, sell everything that you have. Put your life down. Cancel it. And then come here and follow me. Surrender. You see, we're talking about these things. Let me tell you something. If we fail at arriving at the place where we fully surrender to God, this movement fails. Because God destined it for one reason. I want people that will know me intimately, not through the religious courses, people that will come into my presence and that will be taught to hear my voice, that I can sow seed in, that in them it will start growing, and through them it will produce seed that they can invest in the lives of others, in whom it can grow also. And so God said, I want you to take people and teach them the walk of surrender. Teach them, take them by the hand and lead them. And Kobasi, this is coming for your say. If things get difficult, my Buddha, it's not time for you to drop your head. It's time to join hands and to say, walk with me. Walk with me. Because there's no such thing as a life with Christ without obstacles, without people hurting you, without people throwing stones. They did those things to Jesus. What makes you better than Jesus? They did those things to the Apostle Paul. What makes you any more valuable than Paul's life? When you start walking in surrender, when you understand it's not about the things of this world, it's not about the materialism, what that religion so focuses on and promises people, listen, you're going to walk, you know, on a fairy tale grass under your feet and, and, and you're going to have this wonderful, I mean, everything, you're going to float on cloud nine. That is a religious lie out of the pit of hell. It's not real. You won't find it in the life of one of the apostles. You won't find it in the life of Jesus. To follow God, you sell out your life in this world. And you follow where He leads. Now that doesn't mean it's a terrible life, it's a hard life. It is a life with joy unspeakable, full of glory. It's a life where the goodness of God is pressed down shaken together, runs over in your life. But it's a life outside of this world. And you see this this morning? Why have I emphasized, and why is the Holy Spirit emphasizing surrender? So, because surrender breaks your flesh. Surrender breaks your will. Surrender brings you to a place of giving yourself willingly. Nobody's forcing you. Nobody's pulling you. But you've fallen so in love with Jesus that you don't want to be anywhere else except with Him. And you don't want to be positioned anywhere else except in the perfect plan and destiny that He's got for your life. He's become your gem. He's become your pearl. He's become your everything. He's become your treasure. And where your treasure is there, your heart is also. Can you see that this morning? And out of that place of surrender, God now leads you in the world He's predestined and preordained for you, which is a good world. And in that place, everything you do, the Bible says, everything your hand touches, shall... Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Why? Because... I'm not living a separated life with Him. He's in me. He's planted His seeds inside of me. The seed of His presence is in me. And you know what? It's growing in me. And as it's growing in me, the fruit becomes more every year. Because you see, if you plant a tree, in year one, there's this much fruit. In year two, there's this much fruit. In year three, there's that much. Year four, year five. In year ten, the branches are hanging so heavy that you've got to cut them back because the seed the tree, the potential continues to grow as you give yourself as fertile ground as you are willing to continue following in surrender 
How do you receive God's seed? By opening your life and your heart and saying, Father, I surrender to what I hear this morning. I do not just receive the seed of a great word and a great message. I receive the impartation in my spirit. I say, yes, I open myself up. I've counted the cost. I'm not going to do it and turn around and run away. I know the end from the beginning. I know it's going to cost me something. I know going this route is not going to be the smooth, broad highway. But I've counted the cost. And I want you above it all in my life. So I'm saying, plant it in me. I receive it. And then the word comes, the seed. And it falls into that good ground. And immediately it starts germinating because it senses, the word senses, the environment is right. There's surrender here. There's room being made for me to grow. Yes, I can see he's put his wall down. Yes, I can see he's, he's, he's really in love with me. Yes, I can sense that, that, that he's not going to turn back for me. Yes, I can sense, I can shoot the roots down deep if necessary, even if it's going to hurt a little bit. I, I can sense he's sold out, she's sold out. And so I can germinate. And suddenly the word becomes flesh. Wow. And it starts living through you. And it starts living through me. Do you understand why you are here this morning? Do you understand what this fellowship is about? Do you understand that God's purpose is this? That you will not come here to receive the presence of God. And leave to come back to receive the presence of God. Do you understand that you are not here to come to receive the Word of God and to go away and then come back next Sunday and receive the Word of God, but that you should receive the presence of God in such an impartation because you are at the place where you're saying, it's not about this group, it's between you and me. It's not about the others. This is between you and me. And I'm here just for you. And I'm opening my heart Work in me, speak in me, change me. I want to follow you. And as you do that, and you stand here with hands raised up, and the presence of God comes, you say, Oh God, I'm going to die in this presence. I'm going to melt. I can't stand it anymore. An impartation is made. Because you are good soil. An impartation is made because my life, not here, out there, is surrendered. And as the impartation is made, you walk out of here changed into a new revelation and a new dispensation of glory, which means in your own house, when you lift your hands, the presence comes out of you. And you start learning to walk in God's presence Because an impartation has been made. And so with the word, as you receive it, it starts growing and you begin changing. Your ways change. Your actions change. Your behavior change. Your thoughts change. All your vision changes because it's growing in me and it's producing in me everything God put in that seed. It's now growing in me and I'm becoming the product or the fruit of it. That's the purpose of this fellowship. That's why God said, I want you to plant a new tree, start something new. I'm tired of religious people full of seed producing no harvests. And it's not only just their fault. It's not that God's criticizing them. There's a system in place that doesn't allow them to grow that doesn't teach them to grow, that wouldn't cancel its programs and say, let's get to God, let's get you to God, let's teach you, let's bring you to the place where you learn to surrender to God, so what God's put in you can grow. There's too many programs, too many important preachers, too many important men, too many important projects, too many important things to do, to worry about that. And at the end of the day, God's people are sitting full of seed and producing no harvest because they've got no way to produce and they don't know how. So the Lord said, change 
things. I want you to leave the big audiences alone. Just step out for a moment. It doesn't mean I'm not going back there. It doesn't mean I'm not going back there. For this season, God said, step aside from these things. I want you to start something new with me. Facilitate it. I'm doing it. You be available. Will you be available? Will you pay the price? Will you go? It's going to cost you something. You're going to leave this big ministry behind. You're going to leave your reputation behind. You're going to leave your name behind. You're going to leave all the mighty things I did through you. You're going to leave it behind to go and find people that you're going to take by the hand and you're going to start on level zero with them and you're going to lead them slowly into my presence Will you pay the price. And in the process, you're going to get criticized, you're going to get hammered, because you're pioneering something completely new and unknown, and what exists is going to come after you and call you every kind of name under the sun. Will you pay the price? When you walk away from this, understand, you're going to have to depend on me solely for your income. You're not going to have anybody that's going to know you. You're going to be tucked away. It's going to be very small. Will you pay the price? To pioneer a work for God always costs you something. Nothing come for free. But God wants to establish something genuine and authentic. He wants a people that will produce great harvests. And so in this season, we see the Holy Spirit not so much ministering because that's not what I'm doing here this morning. I'm not ministering to you. I'm imparting in you. I'm not ministering to you. Because that's not what God called me to do in this season. He said, I want you to impart. That means I'm giving on myself to you. I'm giving you what God gave me. I'm showing you what God showed me so that you can become everything He designed you to be. Now listen, you can't become me. Because the seed sown in you is unique, brother. The seed sown in you doesn't look like my seed, doesn't sound like my seed, doesn't have the same mission as my seed. I'm sent to bear apples. You are sent to bear lemons. <laughs> lemons aren't bad. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes for a second. Allow the Spirit of God. Jesus, fill your people. Bring great impartation this morning, Lord. Heal hearts. Break hard places. Break hard places. Shakaya Barabas Trubuskiribi. Jesus, 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 mighty God. Ramama Trubu. Change us, O oh God. Find new territory this morning. Find willing hearts. I surrender, Lord. I surrender all. I give you myself unconditionally. I surrender all. I surrender all. Produce in me your will. Produce in me your life. Shamama Trubu. Skiribis Trubu. Rababatu Hallelujah. 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 The fruit, the seed sown in my life, does not necessarily mean it's the seed God sown in your life. You are called to your mission and your purpose. I'm not here to give you mine. I'm here to invest in you, to impart in you the way of finding your destiny, your purpose, and the way of coming into the place where it will bear fruit in you and be produced in and through your life. That's why I'm here, to show you the way. To show you the way to a deeper walk with God, a deeper relationship with God, a place where you can be sold out completely. Why? Why would God choose somebody like me to show you this way? Why would God even call somebody like me to pioneer this new work? Why? There's many great names out there. Yes, but there aren't many great servants out there. 
There aren't many who's prepared from the beginning to say, Lord, hide me. And let you be seen in all things. God, I want to give you my life. Serve. I want to give you in service everything that I am. Whatever you want, I will do. Wherever you send me, I will go. Whatever you ask me to say, I will say. Whatever you want me to be, that's what I'll be. I'm not here for ministry. I'm not here for fame. I'm not here for fortune. I'm here to serve you. Just you. And if you are well pleased with me, it doesn't matter what the rest of the world has got to say about it. I'm in service to you. What do you want me to do? Here I am, Lord. Send me. You see, because God called me that way, and I was willing to... Say it again. Because I was willing to surrender to His will and not seek my own. And because He could take me on this journey, this wonderful experience of seeing His fruit through my life, wherever I went, great and mighty things, because He is great and mighty. Because I was willing to give myself for Him to produce those things through me. And because He found me at a place when He said, will you come to nothing? To start with nothing. And help nothing to grow into something because I surrendered to His will and was willing to leave everything behind and to follow Him into a place that I don't know where I was going. I didn't understand exactly what it would be. Because of that, I can come to you and He can send me to you. Because there's been faithfulness and fruit in my life, I can come to you and God can send me and say, I want you to go and teach them what I've taught you so that I may be great in them and through them also. There's too many great men today and too little of the greatness of God that's been expressed. God wants to change that. You know what? He wants to use ordinary people. Ordinary people. Ordinary people. Are you ordinary? Yes. Yes. Ordinary. Just like me and you, ordinary people. He wants to use them to become a beaming light in the world. And that's the season we are in. That's the purpose of this fellowship. That's why surrender, surrender. You see, if you learn surrender, you say, my God, Pastor, man, Johan, whenever are you going to teach us something else? All we hear is surrender, surrender. We know it now, surrender. When are you going to change the subject? Never. <laughs> Do you know why? Because if you've learned to surrender, you don't need to learn anything more. You say, no, 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 I want to know, how do I grow my faith? Surrender. Because you cannot grow your faith. God's faith needs to grow in you. Surrender. I want to know how I can be more obedient Surrender. Because if you walk in surrender, you will walk in His will and not in yours. You will follow in obedience wherever He sends you. So I want to be more obedient. Surrender. I want the power of God to work through my life. Surrender. Because you cannot have the power of God working in your life You need to give yourself to Him so He can come with His power and work His power in and through you. Surrender. There's nothing, nothing you need to learn other than to live in the place of completely healing yourself to the will of God and allowing Him to bear fruit through you. Just as he planned it and wants it to be. The problem comes in when we want things. I want this kind of walk with God. 
I want a healing ministry. I want the power of God. I want to be, I want, I need to surrender. And not to say I, but you, your will, what do you want? Come God, whatever it may be. Whether it's great or little, in your kingdom it's reversed anyhow. What people consider to be great with you is little and insignificant. And what people see as nothing, you highly exalt. But you see, God needs to change your ideas and your mindset. Because your mindset says... If I, got a, if I see a big church, they are successful. When I see a small fellowship, no, they are a failure. And God comes, He says, I do not look upon man with the eyes of man or the understanding of man. He says, Samuel, Samuel, do not look upon his countenance. Samuel, he looks big, he is not the one. Do not consider his countenance, for I have found a man. Oh, who's the man? Oh, oh, tell me, Jesse, have you got any more sons? Oh, you know, you know, a pecanine. You know, a pecanine, but really, he can't, he, uh, we do not even consider to bring him around the table of greatness. Because at this table is for greatness. God is choosing a man. A king. So we, we, he's after the sheep. He's busy tending the sheep. He's a pecanine. And God says, surely you shall not take a seat around this table before my man has not arrived. For the Lord does not look upon the outer appearance, but he looks upon the heart. And I have found a man after my own heart. God needs to change your ideas. He needs to renew your mind to understand how he looks what he sees, what he values, what he considers to be great, and what he considers to be little. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? This morning, we are going into this table with Jesus. I want to ask you, as you do, surrender. Make the choice, because this is what this table tells you. This is what this table tells you. I don't like that one. I like that one. <laughs> this is what this table tells you. This speaks of the life of Christ. It's the blood. The life is in the blood. When I drink this, I am professing that His life lives and flows in my veins. When I drink this, I am confessing to heaven, your life has become a part of my life. Your blood has made us one. And the life in your blood is the life that's living in me. This year, it says, I am the body of Christ. This tells me, it's a testimony to heaven. You gave your body to be broken so that as I eat it, I confess I am a living part of your body on earth. You dwell in me and you will move and direct me just as you will. I am living in surrender. Have your will and have your way. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Cindy, wat vir ons die wijn glas is. My broer, kom wat vir ons die brood. Kom, wat die brood vir ons is, sublief. 
don't have it before, we don't have it together. Elgin is the key. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, if you don't feel ready for the communion, you say, oh, I don't know. I feel so convicted. Well, you know, it's time to repent then. Not time not to have communion. It's time to make right. It's time to say, God, I cannot honestly make this profession. I know this morning my heart is not right with you, but I want to make it right. So before I take this as a testimony to you, change on the inside of me, I surrender. I surrender. And then you are free, free to take this in union with Christ, in union with the body, because that is what this message is. This makes me one with Jesus. It means me and Christ are one. His life in me, and I'm His body on earth, we are one. And as we take it together this morning, because I am one with Him, and because you are one with Him, that means that we can come in union and in unity with another and share it together as the collective body of Jesus Christ, in whom His life is expressed on earth. Amen? Amen. Let us take a moment to pray. Father, we come to you this morning, and I'm praying this prayer. If you agree with it in your heart, just join me in your spirit now as I pray this. Father, we come this morning before you and before your throne. We come before your Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us, that's around us, and that's with us, and that will never depart from us. We come this morning and we bow ourselves down before you. We this morning say, Lord, we choose to surrender. We are weak. We are fallible. We are young trees that is still growing. But we know what is rooted in us, what has been programmed in us. We know that the life of Christ flows through our branches. And so we ask you this morning to help us. Teach us, lead us into the place where we surrender. And where we truly bring and allow you to bring out the fruit, the treasures of your presence, the treasures of your character, the treasures of your personality and your nature, that it will just be shining through us, that it will just be expressed. By your Spirit, even through us. I pray that upon every life here this morning. As we're going to take this communion, Lord, if there's sin in our hearts. Wickedness, wrongdoing. We heard the word this morning. The word said, put away all wickedness. All sinfulness. Put it away and receive then the imparted word. The imparted seed. So this morning we want to break the chains of darkness over our lives. The bondages, the sin, the things we've done wrong, the wickedness. We want to put it away. We want to put it aside and say, no more. No more shall we surrender ourselves to these territories and to these things to work in our lives. No more. We cut it off and we surrender all this morning to you to come into unity with you. Forgive our sins, wash us in your blood, forgive our unfaithfulness, our unrighteous behavior, forgive it, wash it this morning, cover it with your blood, destroy it this morning, Lord, and bring us unto a straight way to follow you this morning with all of our lives. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you therefore now as we partake have the bread with me. This is your testimony. On earth I am part of his body. Have it with me this morning. And we do it in remembrance of the fact that he gave his life so we may be his life on earth. He gave his body so we may become his body. Thank you, Jesus. As we take the wine down and you drink it, 
We do it together as a testimony that new life has come into us. That His life, His person and all that He is now lives in us. And that we surrender ourselves to His life. That He may truly be seen through our lives. Drink it with me this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. Thank you for your beauty. Let's just worship him for a few moments. Open your heart there where you are this morning. Lift your hands to heaven.